I am joined now by legendary author Jeffrey Deaver. What an honor this is. How are you today, man? Oh, very good. Been doing a lot of work. I actually got up at six this morning to work on my uh, new Lincoln Rhyme book. Ah, we're going to be talking about that soon because I'm very excited. But first things first, you were a folk singer, weren't you? <laughs> I was indeed. I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> you know what? I was, uh, I was on a walk this morning. Uh, and I actually was thinking of cool band names for you and I, if you ever wanted to uh, get back into it, uh, inspired by uh, Hall & Oates, I was thinking a little creative, uh, creatively, Deaver Perlman or Perlman Deaver, what are your thoughts on those names? I, a alphabetical, it, that's the way it works, man, I'm sorry. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not the worst band name, right? I mean, it's kind of catchy. Well, no, no, well, and you know, I, uh, out of respect to your, your viewers, I won't... Uh, I won't uh, deign to sing. I, you know, the thing about singing songwriting, that's what I really wanted to do. And, um, you know, there are two parts to that job title, singing and songwriting. Now, I was a pretty good songwriter. I wrote a lot of songs. In fact, I did, and we can chat about that later. I wrote an album, country western album of songs for a book of mine a few years ago. Uh, so the songs I have down cold. Singing, however, was not my strong suit. So, um, I'm happy to put the words together, but uh, aside from that, no, out of respect to your viewers and uh, basically everybody else on the face of the earth, I, I think I won't get into that career again. <laughs> Does songwriting ever make its way uh, into your novels? Well, interesting you mentioned that. Um, a few years ago, I wrote a book called XO, uh, as in Hugs and Kisses. Mm -hmm. And it was about a, um, uh, a well, I, I, I can give this away, a young man who appears to be a stalker of a young uh, country western singer, a la Taylor Swift. Now, is he just a, a devoted fan or is he truly a dangerous stalker? Well, we don't know until the end because as you know, I like my twists and turns in my stories. Well, okay, she's a singer songwriter herself, very popular, you know, kind of crossover country western top 40 or top however many numbers they have nowadays. And she's, so she's doing, doing quite well. And then I thought, wait, what am I doing here? I've got to write a handful of songs for her. And not only did I write the songs, um, I had clues in some of them that would let the, the readers figure out whether this guy was in fact a stalker. And then, not content to do that, I recorded it in Nashville. And it uh, it's on Spotify, Pandora. You can even buy the thing some places, I think. It's called um, XO, uh, Songs by Jeffrey Deaver. And you can find it uh, wherever you Find your, remember CDs, those little round silver things? That, yeah, you don't see those much anymore, but you can find it online. Uh, I'll make sure I take a listen uh, the next time I take a walk around my neighborhood. Uh, well, today is a very, very special day. I believe a short story of yours may have just come out today. Oh, that's right. I forgot all about that. I, and I should be uh, promoting. In fact, I just got a, um, a text from uh, Amazon Original Stories that's what I'm, I'm doing it for. It's a collection called Hush. And uh, the, there are other authors uh, in it. Uh, Laura Lippman comes to mind, a few others, uh, Lisa Unger, I think. And uh, it's, the theme is about truth, uh, about reality versus non-reality. And heaven knows we certainly have a bunch of that we're dealing with right at the moment. And my story is called Buried. And I'll just tell you about it very, very briefly. It's, um, <clears throat> it's about an older reporter, a print journalist who is um, retiring because his beloved uh, newspaper he's worked at for, for decades is now being uh, taken over and closed down by a big media group in honor of the, their uh, digital content. And it, it has things like uh, scandalous stories about uh, celebrities, interviewers with influencers, and my hero Fitz doesn't even know what an influencer is. And when somebody tells him, he doesn't like the idea anymore. Well, anyway, he um, uh, stumbles on a case, uh, to, to a criminal case to report on as his last swan song um, about a fellow who buries victims and leaves clues for the police to, um, uh, to save the victim if they can figure out the riddle in time. But, but speaking of truth versus non-truth, it seems something else is going on here, and I don't want to give away anything uh, of the story itself, but he finds he has to join forces with a young digital-only online steampunk journalist, uh, a girl named Gotti, who's inked and body modded all up and down, and he says, 
what unlikely uh, an unlikely pair they are. But sure enough, they get together and. I have to stop talking about it now because it's typical of my stuff. It's got three or four big surprise endings in it, but it's called Buried in the Amazon Original uh, Stories Collection, Hush, available today on uh, from Amazon. I am super excited to uh, check that out. Now, in a short, seri- uh, short story series like that, do you have to chat with other writers in the series to kind of get overall ideas or you just kind of do your own thing? No, I, uh, I don't work, uh, work well with others. Uh, I was the kid in the playground who sat by himself with a, you know, a shovel in the, uh, in the uh, sandbox, probably digging graves at the time for my macabre stories even then. I really, uh, you know, Matthew, I really don't um, collaborate with anybody. I finished the book uh, completely done. Oh, my books are short stories. And then I send it to my editor after it's been, I have, copy editors I use. I mean, people who clean up the grammar. Uh, well, the grammar is pretty tight, I have to say. I mean, I, I do a really good job on that. But but I will say that, you know, they find little typos and things like that. Only then does it go to the uh, editor. And there'll be some, you know, good suggestions. But uh, so, no, we didn't uh, collaborate together on this. And each one is a discrete story. It, it, it It's thematically connected, but uh, there really isn't much um, in terms of the storyline that's a, a duplicate of what everybody else is doing. Got it. Super exciting. Well, what you uh, briefly mentioned a few minutes ago, you made a tweet in June saying the book I'm writing right now for publication in spring of 2021 will be a Lincoln Rhyme thriller. Please elaborate on that. Sure. Well, um, as everybody else in the whole world, I've had a lot of free time on my hands. Now, I have to say the the pandemic has not affected me as much as some people because I, uh, for 30 years, I've been writing full time. And that means sitting in a dark room with my dog at my feet, not 30 year old dog, but various dogs over the years, as I'm doing right now. Um, you can tell I like dogs. There's my, my blue dog poster up there. Um, so I, I, I've been very, very productive because I don't have much else to do. At least I had a social life before the pandemic. Don't really have that now. So like yourself and you know, another few billion people, I've been working on several projects. Um, and I'll talk about the first novel first. That's a Lincoln Rhyme book, a title soon to be revealed. That'll be in August, so I'm not giving that away. But it's um, the, uh, for your viewers who aren't familiar, that's the um, character who's in The Bone Collector, Lincoln Rhyme, the quadriplegic forensic detective, his uh, sidekick, now wife, um, Amelia Sachs, and the same cast of characters that we know from, uh, from the Denzel Washington movie and more recently the NBC TV show. So that book is um, is pretty much done. But at the same time, I've been writing a book featuring my new character, Coulter Shaw. Now, we saw Coulter for the first time in a book called uh, The Never Game. That was two years ago. And Coulter Shaw is a professional reward seeker. Uh, in other words, he'll look up on a website or see a, a reward offered in a newspaper, nowadays almost exclusively online newspapers. <clears throat> and he'll... Um, say, uh, see, uh, $25,000 offered for information leading to the uh, arrest and conviction of an escaped convict, or $10,000 offered by the parents of a runaway uh, high school uh, boy or girl, and uh, Coulter will pursue that. Now you think, a professional reward seeker, that's a job I have not heard of before. That's because it doesn't really exist, (laughs) except in Deaver world, because I make stuff up for a living. I can do that. And so what I wanted to do was uh, recreate the classic gunslinger from the 1950s movies, which is what I grew up uh, watching and reading to, I think of Shane, the Alan Ladd Jr. uh, movie, a book uh, also uh, written by Jack Schaefer, wonderful book. Um, I I love the loner, the stranger who comes to town, gets involved in a crime, then heads off again. And that's who Coulter, Coulter Shaw is. Well, um, I have, I, I'm going to continue to write a Culture Shaw book, then the next year a Lincoln Rhyme book, but I wanted to get things started with a bang on Culture Shaw, so I have um, a, a trilogy, a three-book trilogy, I guess by definition it has to be a three-book trilogy, you know, can't, can't do a three-book quartet, that just isn't going to work, but anyway, the first one was The Never Game, the second was The Goodbye Man, which just came out this year, and the third in that series is called Hunter's Point, and I just finished that yesterday. So it has been a, uh, a two-book uh, spasm of writing this year, 
in addition to a few other short stories as well. So those will ideally both be out next year, uh, Lincoln Rhyme in May, and I hope the uh, Culture Shaw book will be out in, uh, in the fall. I am uh, super excited. I really wish I had your creativity. I mean, just listening to you talk and all these years, all these uh, novels and short stories you've been able to come up with, you're like one of a kind. It's really, really awesome to hear this. <laughs> well, you know, Matthew, it's, it's interesting. I, um, I, ha I have an imagination. There's no question about that. I, I, it's just, I was born with it. Uh, so I have no lack of stories, uh, story ideas, whether it's a short story or a novel. That has never been a problem. <clears throat> the problem I do have, though, and I'm very upfront about this, is that I am um, uh, kind of scattered. Um, you can probably tell from my conversation, my mind jumps, jumps around quite a bit, and maybe there's some advantage to that create creatively, but I am not able to simply sit down and start writing a book from an empty piece of paper or an empty screen. I need to outline ahead of time, and I spend months and months working on the story. It's very uh, frustrating. It can be exhilarating at times when everything comes together, but I need to... Um, uh, plan everything out ahead of time, and it's really uh, exasperating work. And I'll stare at a, a portion of my outline. I have a big cork board. Uh, I'd show it to you in my office, except it's I'm replacing it, so it isn't there right at the moment. But it, I'll get another one pretty soon. I put post-it notes all over it, and I just stare at that for weeks at a time, and just think, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's kind of like writer's block before you actually sit down and start to write. It's kind of idea block. And then finally, I'll, uh, it'll come together. The outline for the, um, uh, the, the uh, Goodbye Man, my recent novel, was about 140 pages long. It took me eight months to do. The outline for Barry, my Amazon original story, um, story was about uh, 20 pages. And that, the, the, uh, I, I can't remember how many words. I think it was like a 13, no, I think that was a 15,000 word uh, short story. A long short, long short story, but but that was a, a lengthy uh, outline as well. So that's uh, you know I can't say it's a problem, but it um, it's I've learned over the years it's the only way I can work, and it can be a, a bit exasperating because the basic idea for the story is there, but then to make that into something that is a consumer product is um, is kind of tough. It's like Procter and Gamble says, okay, uh, toothpaste, good idea, let's make toothpaste and sell toothpaste. And then there's a big, there's a long line of uh, activities from, uh, from the idea to the manufacturing, the product testing, the focus groups and things like that. And I'm a, you know, I'm a manufacturer like any other company. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Well, three of your novels have been produced in the films. That must be such a cool feeling to have. Oh, it's very, very exciting. Um, I've had the, um, let's see, Dead Silence. Uh, that, well, that was based on my book, A Maiden's Grave. The Devil's Teardrop and The Bone Collector, of course. Uh, NBC just did the um, uh, TV show uh, called Lincoln Rhyme, Hunt for the Bone Collector. Yeah. And uh, it's just a, just a big thrill for me. I am not involved in the making of the, uh, the projects at all. I have, uh, uh, for one thing, I haven't actually been invited, <laughs> but, but even if I, I had been, I would decline because, um, uh, I mean, other than being like an executive producer, which means they give you an extra check. That's all there is to that. You don't really do anything. Um, uh, mostly because I just enjoy writing my book so much, and I have a, I have a lot of control over that. Yeah. I did go to the set of um, Dead Silence, um, and I met James Garner, a great actor, Lolita Davidovich, wonderful actor too, Marley Matlin. I, I, had, I was honored to be there. I have to be honest, I got bored. I don't know if you've ever been on a movie set, but you know, over and over and over again, they do the same take. And then, uh, and I was kind of excited, you know, so I, I like a, you know, like my glass of wine occasionally, like to go to the bar, hang out with people. They were all in bed by like 6.30 or seven because they got up at five in the morning for the casting call. So I, uh, the, the whole movie making process, I am in awe of, I love films. I've been as, influenced by movies as I have by, by written literature, but I, uh, I just don't have any talent for it. I've, I've tried my hand at a couple scripts and they haven't gone anywhere. So I just stick to the books and you know, with that, I know I will get published.
I know yeah. my work will see the light of day. So this, this recent TV show uh, about Lincoln Rhyme, have you watched it on TV? Yeah, 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 I've seen it. Yeah, they did a very good job. It was, um, I think they had hoped for it to um, be picked up again, but you know, nothing's being done in Hollywood. Hollywood is shut down now completely. I've heard that like a couple of sports teams, a, it may be soap opera, it might be some dramatic nighttime TV, but I think it's maybe one or two soap operas. The, the cast and crew have moved into the studio. Yeah. They're, not, they're quarantining there. And um, so there'll be some, a few things done, but um, you know, it was, uh, to be honest, it, the, the show was very well done. Uh, uh, Russell Hornsby and Ariel Cabell, wonderful Lincoln and Amelia, uh, great job. Um, and uh, Michael Imperioli was Lon Salito, uh, Chris Moltisante from The Sopranos, you know, it was very well written. And, uh, but then, you know, they just came up against the, the pandemic. So will it come back in future years? It, it might, but, but it, you know, it stands alone because uh, not, not to give anything away, but let me just say that it opens with The Bone Collector and it follows through to a logical conclusion. So it can stand alone as a nine episode series. And, you know, there's some series that, just don't don't get picked up, and that's that's perfectly fine. But I certainly uh, you know certainly enjoyed it, and uh, and I, I have to say I'm I'm probably more excited now about television than I am about feature films. Uh, you know I loved Ozark, can't wait for the fourth season to come back. Breaking Bad was the best thing I'd ever seen on on television, and uh, just just love the small screen. You know what I uh, I often get uh, criticized for my uh, choice of TV shows. I'm a big fan of the reality television shows. I like The Bachelor. I like The Kardashians. I like Bachelor in Paradise. I like all those shows, but I feel like there are so many people who are big fans of those shows, but they don't admit it in public. Oh, sure. Yeah, I was with a friend once, and uh, she put on, um, uh, okay, it's The Bachelor, Bachelorette. It was the one with all the guys. Which one would that have been? That's, that's The Bachelor, right? That's The Bachelor. No, no, no. That's The, that's bachelorette. the bachelorette. That's The Bachelorette. It okay, so it was, okay, well, there was one, uh, one, well, hold on, let me see. Okay, there were a whole bunch of hunky guys. That's why she wanted to watch it, whichever show that was. Um, and, you know, there was kind of a, I'd never seen it before. We put it on, and I'm thinking, you know, it's got kind of a, 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 a charm to it. And also, you know, of course, you know, it's kind of set up. The conflicts were, looked a little staged. But you know what? It's, it's kind of fun. And, and so, uh, I, I just love that kind of stuff. Jeffrey, I think we are officially uh, friends now. Thank you so much for admitting that to me. It's so rare that people do that. Oh, please. I, and I, um, well, I guess that's going to be a while before we see some more shows like that, too. 100%. I am really curious, being that this is backstage or behind the scenes. So when, I'm, I'm trying to think of how I want to phrase this. There are pros to having your, your novels be on, on the screen. But what are some of the downsides of it? None. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's paid advertising for me. Um, I think if there's any downside, it's that some of my readers are, um, are disappointed. They feel bad if they see something that didn't work for them. And um, I have to reassure them that I could care less. You know, readers know that the book is different from the movie. Um, a, a friend of mine, a writer who passed away a few years ago, Don Westlake, wonderful writer, he um, had a couple films made of his, of his books. He wrote classic murder mysteries, um, you know, kind of like Dashiell Hammett or Raymond Chandler murder mysteries. And, um, and, and the movies really were not, weren't very good. In fact, one was pretty abysmal. And an interviewer in, came to his office and was talking about the books and then, then gave him uh, you know, a chance to talk about the movies. And the, the interviewer said, oh my God, Mr. Westlake, what do you think about what Hollywood has done to your books? And so uh, uh, Don was a uh, kind of a larger than life guy. He was, he was big and very handsome, very distinguished looking and um, you know, larger than life. And he got this horrified expression on his face and he spun around in his chair and stared up at his bookshelf and then he turned back to the reporter and said, oh, my God, man, you scared me. Hollywood didn't do anything to my books. They're still right there. And it's true. 
you know, you know, and readers are smart enough to know that if there's a good movie made of a bad book, well, they're going to go with the good one. If there's a, a bad movie made of a good book, they're going to stick with the book. So um, I, uh, but I, I'll tell you one thing, uh, I've optioned almost everything I've written and that's 43 novels and about uh, the short story is probably optioned a quarter of the, I've written about 80 short stories, probably option, well, maybe 15 or 20 of them, which would be about a quarter, I guess. Um, and then I just forget about it. And I, if there are any of your viewers out there who are, in fact, uh, uh, potential writers or probably, you know, practicing writers right now, um, it's, you just never know what's going to happen. Uh, the Universal NBC had the option on the TV show for The Bone Collector for 20 years and nothing ever happened. I forgot about it completely. And then one day my sister called me up and said, oh, Jeff, I see that there's going to be a uh, TV show. I said, what TV show? And uh, in fact, then I called my agent up and I said, uh, you know, well, what about this TV show? He said, what TV show? Because we're the last ones to find out. They didn't have any obligation to let us know. Now they have to write us, a, actually, it's a very small check for the TV show, nothing like a movie, but, but so they would have been in touch eventually. But uh, so, so anybody out there who wants to um, uh, make it rich in Hollywood, it's, it's pretty much a long shot. Writing scripts is even, even tougher, but it, it, it can be done. It does, it does happen. I think what's really, really beautiful about, uh, you know, stories, uh, novels in general, and this, you know, of course, is applicable to TV shows and movies is everyone has their own interpretation of it, whether or not the TV show turned out well, or the movie turned out well, or if it didn't, everyone has their own interpretation of, of your work. You know what I mean? I think that's the really cool part that nobody, nobody really all thinks the same. The best directors and script writers take the seed of an idea and then turn it into something entirely different. Um, the uh, English Patient, uh, for instance, um, was the movie, um, uh, was based on a book, I think Michael Ojante, I'm, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing the name correctly. It was, um, it was a sprawling book. It covered all of the Second World War. Uh, very, very well done, literary, literary novel. And the movie was a, uh, whether you liked it or loved it, and I, I did love it, I thought it was very well done, it was just a splinter of, of that book. And the, uh, the director and scriptwriter uh, may have been the same person, I don't recall who directed it or wrote it, uh, said, oh, no, that's not going to work. But this little segment of the, the bomb diffusing um, uh, scenes, uh, the bomb diffusing subplot and the romance between uh, the soldier and the nurse were um, really, uh, you know, really quite, quite well done. That is really, really cool. Well, I, I want to lastly uh, end with this. So your books have sold 150 countries, sold 50 million books worldwide. Of course, I, the numbers are going to continue increasing. Has that hit you yet? No. You know what? Interestingly, it hasn't. I have, um, my goal in this, this whole business has always been to make my living uh, telling stories, writing fiction. Uh, that's it. Uh, never wanted, and I wouldn't not, I cannot afford now a private jet or anything, you know, a Rolls Royce or anything like that. That's never appealed to me. I just want to be able to uh, have the, what I consider the, uh, the luxury of, of having this as my only job. And I didn't start out this way, obviously. I wrote about eight, eight or nine novels working full time. Part of that time as an attorney, which took a lot of time. But to be able to just uh, devote every day. To, uh, to, to crafting novels and short stories is just a, a wonderful um, thing. And I will say, too, that I, I can say in all honesty, it hasn't, hasn't gone to my head. I wake up every single morning, uh, not frantic, but um, aware that I've got a, a task to do today to work on a, a novel or short story. And it could be in the outlining stage, it could be editing, it could be actually crafting the prose. And I'm always nervous that I'm going to get it wrong, that I'm going to disappoint my readers. Um, and that's a very real, uh, very real concern. In fact, I, I woke up very early this morning, I think about six or so. Uh, I think I mentioned that working on the Lincoln Rhyme book. And I, I, I lay in bed for just a little bit and I had an idea about a, a scene that had caused me a little trouble. I was thinking about yesterday. 
And uh, I, I didn't have a great moment of inspiration, but I did finally figure out a way to make that work. Because if I left that scene the way it was, a reader would have said, I have, I have this standard, it's called give me a break moment. And, and what, what that occurs when a reader uh, will be reading along, or a viewer of a, a movie or a TV show will be reading along, and the author has stumbled somehow. And a perfect example of that, which I would never do, is that the, you know, they could summon the police if only he had cell phone reception. Well, I'm sorry, that's a give me a break moment. And we, what we don't see is that the character on screen or the character in the book uh, having cell phone failure, we see the author having creative failure. And so you have to finesse that. But, but I always, you know, um, hold myself up to that standard. I can't have any give me a break moments. And because my books all revolve around uh, kind of elaborate plot twists and turns. I mean, I try to be a magician. I try to be an illusionist uh, because they, um, they all uh, ha live for that big reveal at the end, then another surprise, then yet again, another surprise. Uh, I push the envelope a little bit on that. And so if I'm going to use my give me a break coin, I'm going to use it for the twist and not have fake cell phone receptions or gratuitous sex scenes or things like that. Well, Jeffrey, I, I, I think you're absolutely fantastic. Uh, you, you provided so many readers uh, around the world so much joy uh, throughout your books. I don't think it's possible that you'd ever disappoint your uh, readers. I'm going to leave the floor to you. Anyone you'd like to thank, how can people find you on any of the uh, social media platforms? Sure, I'm available everywhere. It's social media world now. A uh, good starting point is simply jeffreydeaver.com. And uh, I'm on Twitter, Facebook, it's at Jeffrey Deaver. Uh, Facebook is Jeffrey Deaver. And, um, and I've even got, my name's, my first name spelled a little bit uh, differently. You, you nailed it though, man, you got it right. But, it's, uh, but I've got redirect, you know, uh, network solutions. If, if you type in like even Jeffrey, the G-E-O-F-F -F or J-E-F-F-R-E-Y -F -F -E or whatever, I, that's why I pay those big bucks for redirects. So you'll end up in the right place.